Hello, my name is Brian Mulligan and in this short video we'll be looking at peer assessment. Just an overview and particularly in relation to the use of peer assessment in MOOCs. What is peer assessment? It's where somebody submits an assignment online and rather than the instructor grading it, the learners grade each other. So why would you want to use it? Well, we know there's an issue with multiple choice quizzes in large scale courses, that multiple choice quizzes really only can test lower orders of learning. As we move to higher orders of learning, it's not really possible to currently to assess it in some sort of automated way. We need humans to assess it. It's not possible for the instructor to assess higher order learning at scale. So this really is a, a solution to the problem of scaling higher order assessment. But in addition, it does have the added benefit of being able to improve learning. Not only does it allow us to assess higher order learning outcomes, it encourages people to learn at these higher orders. It gives them challenges that require them to engage with materials and think about them more deeply. It also allows them to learn from the submissions of other learners. But a third benefit is that in order to implement peer assessment, you do have to make the objectives of the assignment very clear. So it helps with the understanding of the learning objectives of a particular part of a course. If you're going to use peer assessment in your MOOC or course, there are some issues that you really need to consider. One of these is reliability. How accurate is the grade you're awarding if peers grade each other? Well, research has shown that it's very accurate, comparable accuracy to instructor grading. A little bit more about that later. Another thing is you really must have a fairly well-designed challenge. The assignment that you give the learners must be pretty well designed. It must encourage the students to engage with the learning content that you've covered and engage in a, a deeper way, in a way that will help them to achieve the learning objectives that you have. Now a very important issue that you must consider if you're going to implement peer assessment is the use of rubrics. Because you're asking non-teachers to grade each other, they need some assistance in this, and rubrics are used to give them assistance. This diagram gives an indication of what rubrics are. If you give an assignment, you must have scoring criteria. These are somewhat aligned with the learning objectives of the assignment, and these are down the left-hand column, the scoring criteria. Now, under each of these criteria, in this example, each submission will get a mark between one and four. But in the boxes there are guidelines for the person doing the grading, helping them to decide which grade is correct under that criteria. If these are prepared in advance, they will not only help people grade, but also help people prepare for the assignment. So the benefits of rubrics are as follow. It's a mechanism with easy to follow steps for the people doing grading. It illustrates the priorities or the objectives of the assessment. And in doing so, it guides both the learner and the assessor in working with the assessment. It moves towards making the assessment more objective. These types of assessments are considered to be subjective, but this makes them more objective and more repeatable, uh, there are more likelihood that different graders will give a similar grade to the assessment that's submitted. It also helps you to align the instruction and the assessment, that your learning objectives are covered in your content and that these are covered in the assessment as well. And the whole thing is transparent. Once the grade is given, the learner sees why they got the grade they got. If you're going to implement it, it'll be done in four stages. The first one is the setup, where you set the assignment question or challenge, where you set the grading criteria or rubrics. 
The second stage is where the learners submit their assignment. So they're giving dates between which they must submit and they have to submit before the end date because it has to be ready for others to assess it. Once that end date comes, it goes to the third stage, which is assessment. And a period of time is given to the learners to go into the system and to assess the other submissions that have been allocated to them. Once their, submission, their assessment is finished, the computer works out the grade. The grading can be a little bit more complicated than just taking an average of what the peers have given them in terms of marks. There is a danger that peers will mark inaccurately and marking inaccurately can be a sign that you don't really understand the assignment. So students are also graded on their ability to mark other students accurately. That's taken into the grading calculations as well. Okay, so there are several problems in peer assessment that we have to watch out for. The first one is the accuracy of grading. The second one is the scheduling, when the grading will take place. And the third one is the problem of assignments not being graded at all. Let's have a look at these. Accuracy. These are steps that improve the accuracy of grading. For starters, if you have multiple graders, you're more likely to get an accurate result. The use of rubrics helps people to grade accurately. Anonymity can help reduce the possibility of cheating. Random allocation as well can be also helpful here so that people are not working with individuals that they might personally know and they don't know who they're grading. Self-grading can help as well. Remember that a person who knows stuff but also knows how much they know it probably understands the issues better. So being able to evaluate how much you know or how good your own assignment was is a good sign. And also scoring individuals on their ability to grade others ensures that they put in a better attempt to grade others accurately. And if the worst comes to the worst, why not let the students appeal their grades? When you're dealing with very large numbers of students, there is some probability that some will be graded very poorly by all of the other graders, in which case they should be able to appeal. You can also always say that an appeal may result in a lower grade as well as a higher grade to discourage it, but it possibly is a manageable way to handle the problem of poor grading by other graders. Scheduling. This won't work unless everybody does it together. So everybody needs to be submitting their assignments around the same time so that they're all ready for grading. That can be a problem because people are very busy and it may need to a limited number of people submitting their assignments. But only those people who submit will be asked to grade others. So chances are they have a high motivation to actually do the grading once they do submit. But missing grades, again, if you're dealing with a very large number of people, um, there is a possibility that somebody submits an assignment and then none of the other submitters actually grade them. In which case, Possibly the appeal system may be useful there as well. Okay, that's it for this video. Thanks for listening. I hope you found it useful.